So this is a 1993 Suzuki King Quad 300. The customer brought this to me, obviously, because it's not running right. So I live in Island Pond, Vermont. The owner of this drove five hours north. He lives in Rhode Island just to bring this to me. I guess he was saying most of the shops down there work on dirt bikes, not really ATVs. And of course, he's seen some of my videos, so he decided to bring it to me. For the year of this thing, 1993, this thing is in amazing shape. It does have a busted fender and a tear in the seat. I guess that happened when he loaned it to his buddy, but uh, look at this machine. It's definitely been garaged all its life. The color is nice and bright. It's not faded. The stickers are in perfect shape. It's got like 1,400 miles. This was his father's machine, so it's got a lot of sentimental value to him. I don't know what's going on with this thing. I think it's just carburetor related, but first thing I'll do is tear that carb off, see what's going on. So the battery is weak on this thing. It doesn't really turn it over without a jump. So we'll go ahead, start it up. I'll show you how it sounds. but it should have quite a bit more power than that. So let's bring her in the shop. All right, let's see what's going on with this thing. First thing I'll go ahead and do is throw a trickle charger on here. See if we can get that battery to take a charge. It's got a little juice in it, just not enough to start it. Yeah, she's charging. Go ahead and remove the seat. Looks like some of the air intake is disconnected. Looks like the bolt came out of the clamp. What's going on here? These are way too big. There's no way those are going to screw in all the way. <laughs> Who knows? Might be a mouse nest in here. Um, nice air filter. Actually, it's pretty clean in there. Doesn't look bad. I'll go ahead and start removing these car boots. Make sure we shut our fuel off. Looks like the choke is broke here. Still functioning, but it's broke. Let's pull the throttle cable off here. Like that. There we go. I'm gonna go clean that car out. The outside is filthy. Now that I get the outside fairly clean, we can open up the bowl, see what's going on. Open up the top of the diaphragm, make sure there's no cracks in it. But I'm going to check the bowl first. Let's see how she looks. A little filthy in there, not horrible. You can blow through this, no problem main jet i'm able to look through that one's clean go ahead and pull the pilot jet out i think the pilot jet's going to be clean because it idles good could very well be the diaphragm up top not allowing it to get any air but if we're going this far might as well tear it all apart clean it out and see through the pilot jet so that's good i'm gonna go ahead and pull out the needle and seat just to make sure we're okay It looks good. No foreign objects in there. Let's go ahead and open up the top of our carb. See if we have a leak on our diaphragm. Let's 
There's our issue right there. This is your vacuum diaphragm. This needs to be airtight. I've seen pinholes cause issues with that huge tear in there. No wonder this thing's running bad. Go ahead and pull this off. We're going to have to replace it. I'm not sure if I have one of these. But yeah, it's just ripped completely. Go ahead and put our new one on. That should help a lot. Start reassembling this carb. Float back on there. Spinning jet. Pilot jet. Go ahead and put our bowl back on. Let's go install it. Go ahead and change this out. Choke plunger. Throttle on there. Now that I get this carb on here, I can kind of explain this diaphragm right here. When you open this throttle, as you can see, it does not actually open that diaphragm. It opens this butterfly valve. The engine vacuum is what opens this up. So with any type of tear in this diaphragm, it will not allow this to open, and it won't get enough gas. It won't get enough air. So that's why we didn't even have enough power to make it up the hill there. All right, get the car ball installed. About ready to try to start it. These wing nuts are way too tall. I have to get some shorter ones. It doesn't even close this, but that's how it was. Go ahead and turn the gas back on. Let's go ahead and see if the battery took a charge. Nope. That's all right. We'll give her a pull. Probably better choke it. There she goes. Dry her out. The good news is it's running a lot better. However, it does have some problems. I don't know if you noticed that, but when I was going uphill, when I'd really tromp on it, the clutch was slipping. So that's not good. We get the running issue fixed. However, we're gonna have to do the clutches. I'll have to talk to the owner about that because that's definitely gonna run into more of a bill than the carburetor would. So it actually seems to grab pretty good when you're first taking off. It's when you're going and you're really getting onto it is when it starts slipping. So right now we're in high range, put it in first gear. See it's taking off pretty good. It's not slipping there. The uh make sure all the gears work, low range. Grabs good initially. First gear. It's not bad. So 
the more I tried this out, it didn't get worse. It actually get a little better. I believe this thing was sitting for quite a while. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe I'll just do an oil change on it and hopefully that'll straighten it out. That would save the owner a lot of money versus changing the clutch out.